Hi, I'm Phil from Simply Rhino, and in this short video, I'm going to take a look at rendering in Rhino 7. I'll look at the cycles ray trace render and how we can add denoiser elements with a new package manager. Finally, I'll look at the new physically based materials. Version 7 features significant improvements to rendering. Just as with version 6, Rhino features a rendered viewport which could be considered a sort of a preview of the ray traced viewport. This ray traced or cycles mode allows for proper calculations of reflections, transparency, refractions, translucency, etc. This ray trace viewport, whilst being a live mode, does take some time to generate, and here, because of time limitations, I've reduced the number of render passes from 1000 to 500 and speeded up the video. If I go to the Rhino options and select Cycles, you'll see that I can accelerate the ray trace mode either via CPU or GPU. And on the machine that I'm using here, my Quadro P3000 card is selected as it gives better performance than the CPU. But you can also see that now in version 7 we have a setting called Optics and this should let us take advantage of NVIDIA's RTX GPU technology. Essentially, these are graphics cards that are purpose-built for accelerating ray tracing. And we hope to be looking at these in the new year with the help of PNY Europe. But for now, we're using NVIDIA CUDA acceleration. The next change in version 7 is that now when you select the render button from Rhino, it's the cycles ray trace render that is being used. Now that may seem fairly obvious, but in version 6, pressing render gave us the older legacy renderer. The render tab, here on the right, is where you set your variables for the render. So, for example, the output size, the quality settings, ground plane and environmental settings. So I'll hit the render button and we'll see the render process start and the frame buffer window appear. And this will also confirm that I'm using my Quadro card for acceleration. It's worth noting that rendering this way should be more efficient than rendering in the ray traced viewport. Now with any path tracing or ray tracing, whether it's cycles, V-ray or key shot, the results tend to be noisy. And it takes a certain number of passes, and therefore time, before this noise starts to dissipate. Now if you're familiar with V-Ray or Keyshot, you'll know that these now feature denoiser components that can help to clean up this noise, meaning that we can get viable results with less render passes. The good news is that there are now denoiser components available for cycles in Rhino, and also that these work really well. These are not installed by default, and to do this, I'm going to show you another new feature in Rhino 7, and that's called the Package Manager. From my new in Rhino 7 tab, I'll select Package Manager. Once this is launched, I'll search for Denoiser, and you'll see I have two Denoiser components that I can use on this particular machine. An Intel Denoiser and an NVIDIA Denoiser. The Intel Denoiser will use CPU, and the NVIDIA denoiser will use GPU. So I'll install both of these and restart Rhino, and it's also worth making sure that your NVIDIA graphics card driver is up to date in order to run the NVIDIA denoiser. I'm back now with my restarted Rhino, and if I check in Package Manager, I can verify that both components have been installed. Now I'm going to spin this view around so that I can get to a more shadowy area in the image where there will naturally be more noise in the render. And I'll increase the size of this window slightly. Now I'll go over to my render panel and choose viewport resolution and good quality and leave the other settings at pretty much default and I'll hit the render button. So we can see the render starting to progress now, going through the various passes, and I'll just leave it to render out a few more samples 
and then we can look at the denoisers. The two denoiser components that I installed are here on this side panel and the small checkbox here removes them from the list and I can add them back in again here. These are all the post effects that I can add and I'll add the Intel denoiser back in again. So let's start with the Intel denoiser. I'll apply that and you'll see how it smooths out the noise and if I turn it off again you'll see that the noise comes back. The NVIDIA denoiser is of course going to use the GPU and we're already rendering with the GPU. This builds and behaves slightly differently than the Intel denoiser but the overall effect is pretty much the same. So again, smoothing out that noise. If I just zoom in here and turn off the denoiser then we'll see the noise more clearly. Now we could of course clean up this noise with lots of render passes but of course that takes time and so here the denoiser is effectively taking areas of similar tone and smart blurring those together to remove the noise. At the moment the render has only done a few passes and you can see that perhaps too much detail is being lost and we won't be able to resolve that detail and we've done until we've done a few more passes. But you get the general idea here that this is a really good way of being able to produce a viable ray trace render in much shorter order, i.e. with fewer render passes. The result is very similar to the denoiser that we see in V-Ray for example. So in Windows we can use GPU for accelerating the render and for denoising. If you're using a Mac however then there is no GPU acceleration for rendering and the only denoiser you can use is the Intel component. However, as you can see here, Cycles makes full use of all the available CPU cores on a Mac and the Intel denoiser is very effective in reducing ray trace render times. Another new rendering feature in Rhino 7 is the inclusion of physically based materials. When I navigate to the Object Information tab here and select a material, you'll see that I have the new physically based option. Physically based or PBR materials are a compact format that allows a single material type to define materials that would usually need separate definitions. So for example diffuse, glossy, specular dielectrics, metals etc. Physically based materials can be considered as being platform agnostic and cross-platform and you'll see that they are popping up now in many popular programs such as V-Ray and Unreal. When we choose a physically based material in Rhino you'll see that we have a basic level of control by default and we can also expand upon this by going to the detailed settings here. We can create these materials from scratch but there's an increasing amount of materials available online, many of these being free and an example of this would be cgbookcase.com. When we download a material, we'll often have a series of texture maps that are used to create the physically based material. Here I'm going to create a gravel texture that I downloaded from CG Bookcase. I'll start with a new physically based definition in Rhino and select Add Textures next to the detailed settings here. And then I can navigate to my textures. I can add all of these textures at once and Rhino will give me an option of checking that the textures have been applied to the correct slot. And once I'm happy with that selection, that's all I need to do. Now this material has displacement applied to it and you can see that this looks a little over the top to say the least. This is because my planar surface is small and the displacement is set by default, in this case to 100 millimeters. So I'm just going to quickly switch back to shaded mode, pick the surface here and change the height of the displacement to 3 millimeters. I'll zoom in and you can see now that this is starting to look much better. I'll change this again to 1 millimeter and whilst we're waiting for this to build I'll just mention that for displacement to work well you'll need to create a dense render mesh and so remember that you can set render mesh on a per object basis. 
Emissive materials are also new in version 7. These are part of the physically based description but we'll also have a shortcut here. We'll really only see the full benefit of these materials when we're in ray trace mode. And also now if I go to my environment and I turn the intensity down from 1 to 0 so that I'm excluding all environmental illumination then we'll see the effect of these emissive materials. And you'll see that I can adjust the intensity of the emission here and you'll see that the material provides illumination and lights other objects in the scene. So that's about the end of what I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching and please feel free to leave any comments below. If you found this video useful then please hit the like button and remember that to keep up with the latest developments in Rhino then you can subscribe to this channel. At Simply Rhino we offer training for Rhino and all its key plugins so check out our website for more details. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch up with you in the next video.